Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and The Mandalorian Season 3 just went Jurassic by resurrecting the mythical Mythosaur, the massive creature whose skull adorns the sigils, the armor, the coverts of the surviving Mandalorians, not to be extinct for thousands of years, but alive and well and wet in the living waters beneath the mines of Mandalore. The ending of Chapter 18 leaves us with so many questions about the history and the biology of the planet of Mandalore and in the Star Wars universe, which I started to dig into in yesterday breakdown but in this video let's just break down everything we know about this planet and its dino also subscribe to our new channel the deep dive with even more pointed analyses of the titles you love and you can support us by grabbing some merch at nerdriot.shop like the vosmonaut from our deep dive collection okay so mandalore is a setting that we have visited quite often in star wars canon especially the animated series of clone wars and rebels where we see the mandalorians living in domed cities like sundari to protect them from the scorched terrain of the planet that scorching was caused by the Mandalorian Cataclysm, which came at the end of the final war between the Mandalorians and the Jedi. Historically, these two groups of people have hated each other, and the armor actually referred to these wars in Season 1, Chapter 8. The songs of Eon's past tell of battles between Mandalore the Great and an order of sorcerers called Jedi. Yeah, an order of sorcerers. Basically, this lady saying, they're all witches! Now, in Star Wars Legends continuity, there was a figure named Mandalore the First, who led a group of fellow Tongs from Coruscant and settled on the planet Rune before moving on to a jungle planet that would become known as Mandalore. This would have been sometime in 7000 BBY. Mandalore the First was the first person to use the title of Mandalore. But again, that's Star Wars Legends. It's not necessarily considered canon, even though they are bringing in elements of it back into canon. In recent years of canonical Star Wars titles like Clone Wars Rebels, The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, the ancient, ancient, ancient history of the Mandalorian people has been applied to be a lot earlier. Like Rebels established the history of the Darksaber as over a thousand years ago in the days of the Old Republic. Tar Vizsla, a Force-sensitive human, became the first Mandalorian to join the Jedi Order. He forged the Darksaber. After he died, the Darksaber was kept in the Jedi Temple, but members of the Mandalorian House Vizsla broke into the Jedi Temple and stole the Darksaber back, where they would use his dark saber to rule over Mandalore for many, many years. The Old Republic then fell in 1032 BBY. But Mandalore the Great, it sounds, predates all of that history. This plaque that Bo-Katan reads by the living waters in the mines of Mandalore reads, these mines date back to the age of the first Mandalore. According to ancient folklore, the mines were once a mythosar lair. Mandalore the Great is said to have tamed the mythical beast. It is from these legends that the skull signet was adopted and became the symbol of our planet. We also know from the Ugnaught, Quill, from the Mandalore Mandalorian Chapter 1 that the ancient Mandalorians tamed and rode the Mythosaur. You are a Mandalorian. Your ancestors rode the great Mythosaur. Surely you can ride this young foal. Now, sometimes these sponsorships are me talking about hair care, but to even get to caring about your hair, you gotta hang on to the hair that you got. And that's what Keeps is for. Keeps offers clinically proven research-backed treatments to stop hair loss and improve hair growth. Two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time they're 35, but with Keeps, you can get quality expert care without ever visiting a doctor's office or a pharmacy. All Keeps treatment plans are recommended by a licensed medical provider and delivered straight to your door at about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. Each treatment plan comes with a full year of unlimited messaging, so you can connect with your medical provider about anything, anytime. Keeps has a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in making your hair goals a reality. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of the hair that you have, Keeps has you covered. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get a special offer, go to keeps.com slash new rock stars, or just click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash new rock stars. Yeah, this line was in the very first episode of The Mandalorian. From that moment, they were calling their shots of where this is all headed. One of the these Mandalorians is gonna ride this thing. Now, Mandalore as a planet has gone through several waves of environmental and ecological devastation. According to the Star Wars Build the Millennium Falcon magazine number 32, Guide to the Galaxy, the history of Mandalore, the Mythosars were believed to have been extinct. Legends, they were actually hunted into extinction by Mandalore the first, 7,000 years prior. But either way, they were supposedly long gone by the time of the Mandalorian Cataclysm in which their war against the Jedi caused this planet to get scorched into sand like this. But now we know that extinction did not happen happen. 
At least one layer of Mythosaurs remained active in the living waters, though presumably the Mythosaurs' survival remained a secret, because bo didn't know about it, and it never came up among the members of the Watch. The Watch, as a cult, came up on the moon of Concordia, away from the surface of Mandalore, after House Vizsla was banned there, after losing the uprising to the forces led by bo father. So Mandalore continued to look like a barren planet with domed cities throughout the Clone Wars and throughout most of the Galactic Civil War. When we saw it in Rebels, it had not yet been bombed. But the Mandalorian in the Book of Boba Fett established that there was another wave of destruction called the Purge, or the Night of a Thousand Tears, in which Imperial bombers led by Moff Gideon nukes the planet and its cities with fusion bombs, going through the ashes, stealing any Beskar they could find, and leaving it as the wasteland it is now. Its sands melted down into green glass, and its cities abandoned and covered in debris. But as we now begin to explore these ruins of Mandalore, Din Djarin is surprised to discover that the planet's air is breathable, conditions are not toxic, and fauna has survived. Alamites and reptilian bats? suggesting a food chain that could allow for an apex predator, and sure enough, a city-sized mythosaur is living in those living waters. This mythosaur is aquatic or amphibious, like kaiju from other fiction Godzilla, a titan that, in Toho's mythology, was awakened or activated by human nuclear testing in the Pacific. Now, it remains to be seen if this big boy will be a force of destruction or a gentle giant. I'm assuming the latter, especially since Grogu, with that rancor, has proven his ability to tame large, ferocious beasts. But these living waters, according to the plaque, were known to be a mythosar lair in ancient times, making this a kind of prehistoric fossil site, like the La Brea Tar Pits. That's how bo reads it. This was just a sacred site to her people that she grew up with. She never really thought there was anything magical or special about it. So for an actual living dinosaur to be just beneath the surface of her old field trip reflection pond must be terrifying to her. Since bo grew up with these waters and millions of people living in Sundari never really had any reason to believe a kaiju was beneath their feet, I'm willing to guess that it was those fusion bombs of the Night of a Thousand Tears that brought back the mythosaur. Not necessarily by radiating them into giant sizes the way they do Godzilla, but perhaps just simply by clearing all of industrialized life off the planet for the first time in thousands of years, wiping out all that noisy activity from the Beskar mines, and rebalancing the ecosystem, and allowing the Mythosaur to grow to its full adult size like this. So the Mythosaur were not hunted out of extinction, they just receded to the waterways beneath the planet's surface and they went dormant. And like the dragons of the House Targaryen in the Song of Ice and Fire mythology, their disappearance from the universe coincided with the fall of a great house, living on only in banners, legends, and other iconography. But based on its size now, there is no way this mythosaur could crawl out of the mines up to the surface. There must be another back door, a network of waterways it uses to navigate, like the Naboo waterways occupied by the massive Sando Aqua Monster. There's just no way this mythosaur could grow this big without room to swim. And also, there may be others. From a thematic standpoint, the return of the mythosaur represents a critical restoration of faith for bo and for members of the Watch. Up until now, they've been feuding over the Darksaber, but really, the Darksaber replaced the Mythosaur as a uniting symbol for the Mandalorian people, but the Darksaber never really did that. Relatively speaking, it was a more recent historical artifact that has really, in practice, only ever divided Mandalorians from each other. It requires them to fight each other. The Darksaber is their curse. But the Mythosaur, a symbol far older than the Darksaber, and a symbol more purely Mandalorian, with no sorcerer stink on it, is their Redeemer. Hey, a reminder to subscribe to our new channel, The Deep Dive, and support us by grabbing something from the Deep Dive collection at nerdriot.shop. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EABoss, follow New Rockstars, and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.